Well, it's 7 a.m. I have had five hours of sleep, and I do have a face like a bag of pork scratchings that's been accidentally soaked. But I'm quite happy because we've woken up to a magic view. It's raining, but we're in, in this gazebo enjoying our coffee. Look at this business. <laughs> So we're just waiting for a couple of others to join us and then because it's raining well you pretty much your only choice is forests and waterfalls because they, they look good in any weather pretty much in fact i would say that they look better in rain quite honest with you so we're going to go and chase up a waterfall that you've seen before in fact around about this time last year i think it was do you want to give us the tour of your new grump wagon over there might not be clean yeah I'll put some cheesy real estate music <laughs> on this. So some of you might have heard of this, uh, what's he called? Thomas Heaton, some, 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 some guy on YouTube who uh, got one of these vans and then he actually did a pretty good job at converting it into a camper. But he copied the idea off Grumpatious. Grumpatious did it first, but Grumpatious did a, a terrible job of it. So then Tom did it, he did a good job of it, and then Grumpatious did a better job of it. So now your goal is to do a better job than either one of them, really. Yeah, and I think I did. Really? Yeah, I think I managed to do a better job with both of them combined. Give us the tour, let's uh, let's see the features. Sure. What's this thing here? This is my power bank. Yeah. So that uh, activates my lights. Uh, we'll switch on the diesel heater. Oh, you got a diesel heater? Yeah. I don't think Grumpton's got one of those. You need it in Canada. Well, you do, so yeah. I should let him know. Uh, and you got some bear spray there. Yep, yeah, <laughs> just in case the bears come. I so I guess the big thing with these things, it's quite a small van, it is, it's just the storage, isn't it? Right? It's like, how do you store all your crap? So you, I see you've got a bin there. Yeah, so it's really, as you're right, it's, it's being able to survive inside the vehicle and do as much as you can inside the vehicle. So, I mean, for me as well, apart from sleeping and doing all your business and all that lot, I need a little workstation. So what, what, where do you work on your images? Uh, so this was this was stolen by Thomas Heaton. Thank you very much. But stolen by him or stolen from uh, him? You know. I'm pretty sure Tom did that first. He did. So there's my workstation. Yeah, that's pretty cozy. Kitchen counter, eat my dinner. So it's your kitchen countertop, yeah. your, your workstation, and then that's some storage Store, there. Uh, knives and forks, uh, trash, easy storage, cups of coffee. Yeah. Sunglasses, that kind of stuff. Nice and storage. Yeah. Like that. Locks into place so it doesn't move around. D did you copy that off, Thomas? No, I made that up myself. It should be said, should be noted that Chris is actually a woodworker. So, you know, he, he likes doing all this kind of stuff. He, he's, he's pretty handy with all this kind of stuff. That light makes it go from like <laughs> one star to, to three star. That's It's now deluxe. It is. So then what you got down so here? It's uh, more storage, a bit of a pantry area. Yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, for washing. Yeah. Washing utensils. No, no plates. Yeah. Uh, we have cooker, stove. Oh, it's a little one one burner stove. Yeah, one there. burner stove. And then you got a sink down here. So made a little sink out of a dog bowl. Dog bowl. Yeah. Running water. That's brilliant. Just off of off of a little pump. A little pump in the back. Oh, by the way, look at this view. I mean, this is this is what we're dealing with. This is what you woke up to today. That, that's all right. Uh, when the bin's not there, we get access to a storage apartment. So you can access that from inside and from yep, front, from the back. Front and back poo bucket. Have you used that yet? No, it's fresh. Why haven't you used your poo bucket yet? Well, because I haven't needed a poo. Have you sewn it up or what? I mean, <laughs> I'm every four hours, I don't know about you. Maybe four days. <laughs> that's not right. That does not, that's not right, Chris. You need to see a doctor or a yeah. seamstress. <laughs> Diesel heater heat comes out of there. So, with this being such a small space, yeah. I guess that's plenty, right? Yeah, I have to turn it off after about 10 minutes. Yeah, you, you, you can't keep it going, it's unbearable. No. And then under here, we have food pantry, food drawer. I noticed there's a theme, it's mostly Indian food that you eat. Yes. I approve. And then, uh, clean clothes. Yeah, pretty cozy. And then, of course, the, the, the cockpit, right? This is where the driving goes on. So that's that's from the, the sort of interior. Then let's go around the back and uh, look at the inner workings. Look at the guts of, of this 
establishment. Uh, so in here we have that uh, same access door Yeah. for the poo bucket. Oh, that's your poo bucket. Yeah. It's tiny. A diesel heater, spare water storage. Yeah. Obviously fuel for the diesel heater. Right. And my water, con my water jug. Yeah. With the little pump inside. The most important part of this whole thing, camera storage area. Yeah, that's your, that's where your gear goes. This whole rig, this is smaller than uh, Grumpton's, right? This is a smaller model, so a bit more economical. This is the standard wheelbase high top. Right. Is this the same as, as what Thomas? Thomas, exactly the same as Thomas, as I do believe. So you, you couldn't just be a little bit original and get No, I, I copied him entirely. No vents in the roof yet. Nope, so the next plan is to drop the headliner. Yeah. And I'm gonna insulate the uh, the roof yeah. as I've insulated the floor. And then I've got little puck lights to go in. Uh, will be controlled from that switch. And there's gonna be a max, a small max air fan exhaust or intake going into the roof. Yeah. You know what you really need though, is take out that passenger seat because you, you travel alone, wood stove burning wood stove there with the chimney going up that that would be that would be the coolest fan I, i'd ever have seen a bit hick yeah i mean i'm a redneck now i live in the absolute middle of nowhere i've got a solar panel to go on yeah and a roof rack for uh, fuel carrying some spare fuel yeah that's a pretty slick landscape photography camper van rig. But if you were thinking of going down this road, it would be irresponsible of me if I didn't mention that these things have a habit of breaking down. Now, I was wondering if I should tell you this. Yeah. That I was chatting to Grumpton the other day and he was quite upset that once again, his Delica had conked out, mm. broken down in the middle of nowhere and it was another nightmare towing episode. Chris, don't do it. Delicas are a piece of shit. Which happens usually about twice a year for Grumpton. And so he was lamenting and saying, I think I'm done. Mm -hmm. He was actually thinking of getting rid of it. A snorkel like Tom's, all oh, the trimmings like this may look cool, but it's still a piece of shit. And uh, you're, you're just getting into this. I just, just started. And so I, you know, sorry about that. Oh, oh, oh. Well, we can document the journey. Yeah, the nightmare. Like the pitfalls and the, and the joy. It's not that much joy, though, is there? Sounds like a bit of a nightmare. Whereas my horrendous looking mm -hmm. rig, it might look a pig, but it, it, it is, it's a five-star hotel on wheels. It, it really is. Tell us about your bug screen. So this is a um, modified door screen. Yeah. Uh, that I've put mag cut down and put magnets on it. And it basically... Also, the door has to be open for this yeah. to work, but yeah. of course, that's, you know, that's the only time you need them, really. That is pretty cool. So you can just set that up, open the tailgate and just go to sleep yeah. whilst lakeside and enjoying the view. That's pretty cool, I must admit. And then you've got your little privacy screen there, so people can't see you wanking. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's nice to be watched. This is not that kind of channel, Chris. Oh, here come the guys. Time to the morning to you. Good morning, gentlemen. How much sleep did you get? Uh, five or six hours. Yeah, me too. Yeah. What's your face like? Roadkill. <laughs> What's your face like, Ben? Fresh like a daisy. It's a bit obscene, actually. <laughs> that never happens. That never happens. <laughs> right, should we load up? And so we headed to a nearby gem deep in the forests of Nova Scotia. Not a bad little... Uh... Not bad at all, man. Not bad at all. But I know you guys have seen this already from last year. But no matter how many times you see it, it's pretty magic. There aren't that many places you can go in Canada without a bunch of annoying YouTubers like myself clogging the place up. And though it might not be quite as spectacular as some of the waterfalls that we shot in New York and Pennsylvania last month, there's nobody here but us. It's complete deadsville. We have the entire place to ourselves and it is 
glorious. Well, it started glorious, but it didn't take long before somebody's camera went for a swim. What I like to see in my clients is a willingness to get their feet wet. Yeah, you've got to get your dangleberries in the water. <laughs> you've got to feel that sweet, soothing water on your potatoes. Ben swiftly became a star pupil with a daring squat that put his Leica camera just above the white water. But don't worry, <laughs> he signed the waiver. I'm so proud of him. I'm almost in tears. Getting emotional right now just watching him graduate to a full dangleberry dipper. It's a special moment. I'm just amazed by this waterfall. I just want to watch it. It's, yeah. it's pretty incredible. Let's see, can I see what you've got there? Yeah. Just steal ahead. your composition. Yeah, I like all this greenery that you've got here yeah. in the foreground. That's actually a pretty good shot, that. Oh, thanks, man. I'm working on it. Yeah. You know, it's getting there. It might not be the final one. Yeah. You know what this stuff is? Oh, that there? Yeah. That would be lichen. Subscribe. How's it going over there, Ben? I'll come and uh, come and help you out. Do not get that camera wet. Is it insured? Is it? F Do not get that camera wet, or you'll need basmati rice. Do not get that camera wet. Just sit on your ass and keep it dry. That makes me so proud. I I'm so proud because I have done that about 500 times, <laughs> and I still do it to this day. I, I think he's professional now. That, that's that's the, oh, he's, oh, he's, he's going to go again. Do not get that camera wet. Is it insured? Is it? F do not get that camera wet, or you'll need basmati rice. Do not get that camera wet. Just sit on your ass and keep it dry. I do have to give you occasional professional tips. And one thing that I learned long ago was because of exactly what happened there is Always use your tripod as just like a, a balancing walk, walking stick, a, a pole. Just having your tripod with you when you're crossing a river, it's the difference between <laughs> going all the way in and just getting a little bit wet. Rivalry among YouTubers is a real thing. Chris Jason was just complaining about you being in his shop. Prima Donna. One thing that he did say though was it wouldn't be so bad if you were naked. So I mean, <clears throat> maybe rip off and just, yeah, just get in there. Yeah. Got it? Yeah. I didn't know there were Sasquatch in Cape Breton. <laughs> <laughs> no, you got to take all of your clothes off. What, what's that thing that you're still wearing on your back? <laughs> <laughs> My rug. <laughs> ben had got himself comfortable with the tripod to set up his shot. So I thought I'd go over and have a nosy. Right, so Ben has framed up quite a taste delicious shot if i do say so uh so we'll show you the back of the camera and explain this quite juicy composition right ben you want to just talk me through this gorgeous composition really you have this beautiful foreground here with these ferns and the raindrops yeah. on them um, and then a little bit further back we have these two taller plants yeah um, some, some yellow flowers yeah, in some there yellow flowers in there we're going to have to focus stack this. Yeah. Uh, and then we have all this cascading water, yeah. which will look beautiful you know, with the shutter speed slowed down. And then the falls. Uh, we cut out the atrocious sky. Yeah. And there's a lot of color. That's why I like right. this shot. So this is always the challenge with just this small amount of movement. Like, just look at that. It's just a tiny amount of movement. Just very subtle. So the challenge that, that we often have with these types of shots is you've got to shoot with a stop down aperture. So let's say something like F16, just so that your focus stack knits together and it's not that bright. So how do you get more speed, but still keep those narrow apertures? So you've got all that depth of field. And really, okay, okay. you've got to up the ISO. That's all that you can do. But of course, with this being a very posh Leica, camera i'm sure that it's got amazing noise performance oh, yeah. and it's not going to be noisy at all so so maybe we'll do a few more of those that maybe like iso 800 or something like that okay. and just freeze that motion So Ben went
went for a focus stack foreground, but with a deliberately blurred background, which is not something I would have done, but I actually kind of like it. So what's next then? Uh, I'm waiting for uh, Jason to get out of the water. He's faffing about over there. Yeah, because if you go out there, yeah. you, you'll be in his shot. I'm going to go probably 50 feet up from where he is. Well, he can Photoshop you out, surely. Yeah, that's true. Well, lead me in, because, you know, I am a good-looking chap after all. Nice shot. Nice. <laughs> There's been a bit of a mishap, and uh, Jason's camera went for a swim. Was it switched off at the time? It was. Well, you know, at least it's just fresh water. It's not like seawater. Oh. That's the that's the pits. I'm not going to turn it on again for now. But I, I thought that with Nikons, they were supposed to be so good that you can drop them in a river and not worry about it. Does that apply to any electronics? Oh dear. That's a bit moist. Was it your <laughs> you fault? You sent me over there. I sent him over there. <laughs> I saw you in there. Yeah. Stealing the shot that he stole off me. Yeah, it's, it's my shot from last from last year. Yeah, but mine's better. Because it's on a Canon L5, so. Yours is better than mine, is it? Yeah. Why is that? Yeah, we've got light and we've got moss. We've got light on the moss. Yeah, I had, I had oh, light. Did you? Well, it, it's daytime, so. Oh. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a pretty good composition. You, you know, you can see uh, what inspired you, you know. It's wet inside. Oh, is it? Yeah, because I just put the card in again and brought it out and it's wet. It's my, oh God. So you have bracketed and... Mm -hmm. Focus stack, and you're gonna and you do what I did, and you're gonna you're gonna fill in the triangle of pointless this yeah, there with with yeah with trees. Yeah, okay. it's obligatory. Yeah. So did you at least get a good shot before your camera went for a swim? I have no idea. I didn't turn it on yet. If your memory card can't be accessed, I can always give you my shot. Well, that's awful nice here. Yeah. That'll be twenty dollars, please. <laughs> what a wanker. Oh. At this point, Jason had to do the walk of shame and find the nearest bag of basmati rice. But we headed north to the best campground in Canada. So we finally arrived at Meat Cove after a hair-raising drive on that road of death. It was, yeah, yeah. Especially in this thing. In this thing, yeah. It so do you like think it. your suspension is shot then, or just shit? Well, shot's a bit harsh, isn't it? Well, no, that means it's knackered and needs repairing. Wow. Shit just means it's just not very good. Well, can't we go somewhere in between? Like, it just needs to be looked at and a bit of service done to it. A bit of service <laughs> needs a rebuild, yeah, let's be honest. So we, we saw some absolutely majestic misty mountains on the way in, but because of the heavy rain, no no reflexion, which is an absolute gimme shot with the drone, which we may be able to get tomorrow, uh, but we didn't get it tonight. You could check out my YouTube channel because it'll have images of those uh, mis wispy clouds in the mountains as we drove in. Anyway, so this is where we were last summer. I don't know if you watched that video. If you did, uh, here's the, the drone shot that I, that I managed to get. And then after that, that drone shot, around about sunset, I got this beautiful shot of these, these lupins that you can see here and the lupins down there. Here's a shot that I got of the lupins. And I probably don't need to reshoot that, but I might go down and have another look at these lupins because whenever you get a forest full of lupins, there's always some shot to be had. So I might go and play with that. But if we just get five minutes, you can get your drone up, Ben. Yeah. I have to say, after disparaging his van, you ought to put a link in the description below. To Thomas Heaton's van video, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there might be a link. That'll be $20, please. <laughs> <laughs>
For everybody's comfort, Chris was kind enough to test out his new purchase, which was a kind of awning that attaches to the back of his van. Both Ben and I were somewhat skeptical of the sturdiness of this purchase, but after a few teething problems, it was pretty good. Clearly, Thomas Heaton is quaking with jealousy right now. It's actually pretty good. It's, uh, it's big enough for, I would say, all four of us to sit underneath and just keep dry from the rain. I'm quite impressed, actually. $150 well spent there, Chris. With my supervising duties fulfilled, it was time to serve up a delicious steak dinner. Now, at Photo Tripper Enterprises, we don't always treat every one of our clients this well, no. but uh, for Ben, we've actually made him a, a steak dinner with a little bit of salad and some asparagus. Enjoy. Thank you. Enjoy. I can't wait. Yeah, I bet you can't. That'll be $20, please. 15. <laughs> 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 Adjust your expectations because it, it did come out of the photo tripper chariot, right? So it, it's it's cooked so that you won't get ill, but it's it's not perfect. <laughs> it's quite delish. What are we what are we pairing it with? Though? Oh, pairing, yes. What did you bring, Chris? I drank it. What? I finished the bottle of red wine I bought yesterday. Last night. Last night. Alone in your van. Yeah. <laughs> How about some tap water? Maybe perhaps some tap water, yes. Is the dysentery included? That'll be good. <laughs> <laughs>